Las Vegas is like no other city in the world when it comes to poker, and when you visit, you're gonna have a lot of choices of which poker room to play. That's why I've put together this video where I've ranked my top seven choices so that when you're there, you spend time in only the best places. Let's get to it with number seven. Number seven is Mandalay Bay. Now, Mandalay Bay is located on the far end of the Strip, but one of the things I really like about it is that the property attracts all kinds of tourists and conventioneers, and so the scene there is really casual. It's often filled with a lot of people who are just on vacation and hanging out. On average, you're only going to find a 1-2 game running in this room. However, the game tends to be pretty comfortable to play in, not super competitive, not really scary and intimidating. So if it's your first time in Vegas, though this is out of your way, and that can be a little bit, you know, challenging or, or not as enticing, the room that also tends to be a benefit for this room because you're going to have players who might otherwise show up there, say, nah, I'm going to choose something closer. Number six on our list is another property that's kind of out of your way. So if you're staying on the strip, this is not going to be the closest location to you. And that is Resorts World, where the old Stardust used to be. Resorts World is newly built. It's got a great facility, clean, nice environment. Now the difference between Resorts World and Mandalay Bay is that Resorts World runs a lot of games. So you can find 2-5 and you can find higher stakes. And you're going to, with that, find more competition. But this is another spot that is a great room. It's just really suffering from location more than anything else. Number five is the South Point. And the South Point is also one of those that's going to suffer from location. If you're staying on the Strip, you've got to get an Uber or a rental car or whatever and get a little bit out of the way before you actually arrive to this property. Now that said, I've played there several times and I really like the South Point. The South Point kind of has this unique mix where you have more of these casual players and not a ton of people that are there to just absolutely crush. And so you kind of can get a mix of a softer game or a more advanced game and you can move in between tables. Just gives you a lot of flexibility, a room that I really like and one that's definitely worth checking out. Now the really nice rooms on this list that are coming up are going to have a lot more competition because they're just sought after. They're sought after by good players and bad players alike. Number four on this list is the Venetian. And the Venetian to me when I walk in feels like, wow, this place is incredible clean. It's got good good food choices and one of the things I really like is that that poker room is located right at the front door when you walk in so why is it number four on the list the rake the rake is high now you can argue that the rake being high is actually some kind of a positive and I'll explain let's say we're gonna play 20 hours of the Venetian over those 20 hours I'm unlikely to receive any bonus hands though on occasion I will receive that money back so it's being pulled out of every pot and it's being distributed to the entire room I don't like that in a short term because on average, I'm not going to receive much of that back and I'm gonna watch more money disappear off the table. I prefer to find the more consistent earnings rather than try to hit some bonus hand and have the potential to play with some worse players. This might be one of the coolest properties on the strip and if you can afford to stay in the rooms, which they're pretty spendy, I've only stayed there one time, it is gorgeous, great facilities, a great place to stay, and a place that I would highly, highly recommend if you're there more for the experience and vacation and not so much just for poker. Number three on this list is the Aria. Now the Aria has been around for a while, but it has a newer, cleaner feel at City Center, and it's just a really nice poker room. They've done a good job. There's always a good game running. You can always find good action there. They don't have any kind of uh, prop money coming off the table, so you're not gonna win anything if you make a bonus hand. But that said, you're also not gonna have that money disappearing off the table. This is a, a nice place to play, uh, comfortable, quality games, and I think you're gonna just enjoy your experience when you're there. Now the Aria is an upscale expensive place, so there aren't a ton of cheap options here if you wanna take a lunch break. There is a nice little pizza place that's just outside of the room that has you know, pizza by the slice, it's very affordable. This is a room that I really enjoy. One of the drawbacks now, we're starting to get into these rooms where they're really sought after. So this is a room that a lot of people wanna play in and the wait times can take quite a while to get a chair. The Aria is a great place to play, but if it's your first time visiting or you're trying to get your feet wet or maybe just familiarizing yourself with poker, this is not the room I would choose. I would probably choose a place like Mandalay Bay, which is why it does make the list. The Aria is going to, and basically all the rest of the locations on this list are going to be harder places to play at. Stronger competition, stronger players showing up there, and people who are pretty serious about their poker on average. Now let's get to number two. I am a huge fan of the movie Ocean's Eleven, and so I can't help but put the Bellagio 
at the top of my list. But it's not just because the movie was filmed there and it's one of my favorites. It is because this room is excellent. But the reason you should go to the Bellagio is that it is a comfortable room. It is well run. There are lots of tables, tons of game options, and it brings in both a competitive element but also a tourist element. Now, because the Bellagio brings in the upscale people and some of the folks that have more money to spend, you're going to find that there are more people that are showing up to a 510 game that want to play for $1,000 because $200 at a 1-2 game feels like nothing to them, but their skill level is not high enough to be at a 510 game and be a winning player. So there's this nice balance of, of folks that are maybe a little bit less intense a little bit less skilled that are showing up to this room but they want to play they want to play 510 now this might be again this is a small detail but most places you get a bottle of water these days it's like this big and the bellagio will give you a real bottle of water you can actually drink it and feel like hey i got something instead of having one sip and being like oh my water's gone the number one drawback to the bellagio and the reason why it tends to fall just a little bit down on my list is that it's so popular that during a busy season, you can wait for a very long time for a seat. There's been plenty of times where I've walked over to the Bellagio, I've called ahead on the list, and I get there, and I wait, and I wait, and I wait, and I decide, all right, there's a room open, I'm just going to go play a higher rate game, just so that I can have a chair and actually be playing instead of sitting here. And then maybe an hour after that, I'll get a phone call, hey, your seat's open. So the Bellagio does have that drawback. It's so sought after that you might find yourself waiting for a very long time for a chair. Number one on the list, also a Steve Wynn property, and he's so proud of it that he named it after himself. It's the Win and Win Encore. This is a room that I do not take a trip to Vegas without stopping in and playing some poker there. This poker room is clean. It feels upscale. It is well run. It is just an excellent place to play poker. Again, as I've stated for the other top three locations, there's no rake being pulled out to pay players a bonus. Now, this might be a stupid reason to love this poker room, but one of the things I actually really enjoy is that they have a bathroom inside the poker room. And so you can get up from the table, miss one, maybe two hands, and be back down at the table and playing again. They have great drink selections. They have massage available in the poker room. They have all kinds of games. You can play one, three, two, five, five, ten and higher they've got plo games running the room has just about everything you could want it's gonna have a longer wait list again it's well sought after also the win runs some incredible tournaments and if you're looking for great value a great return with a lower rate this is an option that's usually available during the world series of poker they'll run a summer series that kind of runs alongside the world series of poker and their games are raked less than the World Series. So when you show up, on average, more of that money that gets put into the pool is gonna go back to the players, and I really like that. Hopefully at this point, you know where you wanna go play in Las Vegas, but if you have any questions or further comments, anything you'd like to know that I left out, comment down below, and I'd be happy to try to answer that for you and to give you the best perspective I can on what you should be doing while you're in Las Vegas so that you have a great time. And if you've never been to a poker room before and you're feeling nervous about that, well, here's a video for you to try to give you an idea of what's coming up next. Thanks for being here.